Hello everyone, and welcome to Dyson Sphere Program. This is a game that's in early access, was released in January of 2021, so earlier this year. And it's basically similar to a Factorio builder, a city builder, strategy builder, etc. With the ultimate goal is to build a Dyson Sphere, which is what you can see on the screen. Now, I am by no means an expert of the game, but uh, I'm quite comfortable, especially early games, so we're going to jump into it. And when you load up the game for the first time, you'll have these options. And we're just going to go all your settings. I basically keep everything basic. You can adjust this as you see fit, change down your video settings if you need to, etc. But when you go into a new game, you're presented this. Now you can move this little map around by pushing your middle mouse button or whatever key yours is set to. Mine is my scroll wheel. And as you can see, there are lots of different types of colored stars, shapes, etc. On the right hand side, it's listed the types of stars. A bunch of different letters, neutron, white dwarf, black hole, and all these have different properties and have different benefits and, and I guess not benefits, if you want to call it that. Uh, I won't go into all that at this time. And you have a couple options at the top. Cluster seed. Now, if you have a seed that you find online or from a friend or whatnot that you want to try out, like if I just put in random numbers, that's the seed you get. It, it's just um, it's all procedurally generated in a sense. And you're always going to start on a G-type star. You can adjust the number of stars from 64 all the way down to 32. Of all the times that I've played, I've never gotten anywhere near using 64 stars. But obviously, the more stars there are, the more options there may be for expanding. And your resource multiplier, 1x is default. You can go down to 0.5x all the way up to infinite, which I don't exactly know what infinite does. I think it's just the... Um, the amount of your patches of ore or oil etc it it never runs out i believe that's how it works don't quote me on that and down here you can have random start game and then you can go back to the menu so we're just going to hit random and as you can see every time you click one the numbers on the right hand side change the number up here the cluster seed changes and it's just i don't have a specific seed in mind so we're just going to jump into one that has pretty balanced here you can see our neighboring stars aren't that far away. And we're just going to start. And we get to watch the intro. And I'll just let the audio play for that once the guy kicks in. But this is the game. Welcome to the actual universe. You may find it's different from our homeland. Should you be able to adapt to the laws of physics in a short time, I am your advisor and will help you through this mission. Now we will get those little kind of tool tips popping up here and there. That's the sun, by the way, our sun. We have our planet. So your starting planet, Everything here I'll is let him talk. As one of Cosmo and the pioneer of the Dyson Sphere program, you will explore this cluster step by step. By using the resources here to construct the Dyson Sphere to provide energy for the center brain to maintain homeland, starting from scratch. I have chosen a designated planet for you to start the mission, which has necessary resources for initial development. Now please drive the space capsule to the planet. Now we won't listen to all of those just in the beginning here. So as you see in our system, we have two stars, Beta Valorium 3, or excuse me, 4, 1, this is 3, and then the gas giant, which is 2. Now when you start out, there are the odd cases where it's not like this, but your home world will always orbit now an ice you are about or to a reach gas giant. Designated planet. And as you see, this is a very much looks like an Earth type world, if you if you call it that. Now it says here drive your space shuttle, but you don't have to touch any controls. This is all do this all automatically. This little cinematic, and you can't fast forward that as far as I know. It just plays out as it plays out. It's still a nice one to uh, to start the game with. And here we are. This is Icarus, a lightweight industrial mecca with power. I'll try to talk control. over him a little bit. You can use the arrow keys. You can uh, right turn off your tutorial, to of course. If I double click, it'll go away. So basically, this is our world. 
You hit the M key and you can get the map view. In the planet view mode. You double click those tutorial things and it goes away. For the sake of this, we don't no, need that and we're going to get a lot. I should have tried disabled that. But anyway, you click your middle mouse button to rotate around. You can rotate like this. You press the N key, always puts north as the red, and then your south pole is the blue. On the right hand side here, it gives you different information. Now, since we don't have any sort of vein um, exploration research done, this is all going to be blank. You can't see it from the map as far as where is what is what. And down here, vein distribution, this is blacked out because we don't have to research that. And then here, anyway, we are on a Mediterranean satellite. So we're a satellite planet to our, or is it our gas giant? Now you have gas giants, and then you also have ice giants. We are orbiting a gas giant, which we'll talk about much, much, much later. In here, it tells you what resources are available on this planet. Now, silicon and titanium will never be available on your home planet unless you have some weird seed that you find that in. Ocean is always water. Your construction area is basically how much land there is. You don't have to terraform, and it's at 54%. Wind ratio is 100, solar is at 98. So that's basically when you use your wind turbines, you get 100% um, value, and solar is pretty much 100%. Because some planets that you go to, this could be much lower than 100, it could be much higher than 100. And that basically is determined whether you use wind power, solar power, or your combustion generators, or you use some other type of power. I'm getting ahead of myself here. And then you always are going to have crude oil on your Mediterranean satellite planet. And the amount is unknown, and that'll be a value based on a per second value, and that's a total amount. So it's kind of misleading in a sense because each of your wells aren't going to have that amount. Anyway, down here, your orbital radius, or basically what your orbit is around your gas giant, your orbit period is how long it takes to go around, or sorry, this is around the sun. Orbit period is what it takes to go around the sun, and then your rotation period is, is how long it takes to rotate. Now, if these two numbers, if you follow my mouse, are similar or exact, you're up here, this will say totally locked, which basically means the same side of the planet will always be facing the sun. Now, that's very important once we start getting into shooting Dyson Swarms and Dyson Spheres because basically you, gotta, you wanna always be shooting at the sun. You never wanna be in a dormant phase. Anyway, and then you have inclination, which is basically your angle. This, I don't really know what this, if it really matters what this is. Some of them are completely turned on their side. And then your axis, which is how it spins, something like that. These numbers I don't pay any attention to. Anyway, we're going to jump in here. So if you hit M, you get to see what you have here. So you have copper. You hover over these things. Coal. You have stone. And then where we have some iron here. We have more iron down here. Usually you have... Just like in Factorio, in a sense, all your starting resources will be available right away in a small little kind of cluster. Like this is only 50,000. This is only 50,000. These numbers will be bigger. This is 590. This is 800. This is probably 760, et cetera, et cetera. So basically, the first thing you do is uh, you harvest your, I don't know what you want to call it, your spaceship, in a sense. And until you harvest that you're, and you harvest you anything else, operation. You're not going to get anything available down here. You'll see. You'll see as soon as we pick this up, um, this will start changing. And if you press you the several items. you press the F key, it opens up your inventory on the left, and it has your replicator, uh, basically your crafting window, and it has the Q. Now, as far as I know, you can't change the Q. Once you select something, you either have to right-click to cancel it, or you have to let it play out. Buildings, we can't make any right now because we have no resources. And then we can make these different components. Now, if you press the E, e key, it just is just your inventory itself. And then you press, you, the, hold down mount. you press the F key, it brings up your buildings and components. Um, and before you do anything, you got to go into your tech tree. So basically, this is where we started. You have a main quest, and the quest takes you all the way across to completing your Dyson project, I guess. This is tons and tons of research. It, some of the basic stuff requires items. As you keep going up, it'll require blue cubes, 
red cubes, yellow cubes, and then we start getting into things like purple cubes and then green cubes, which they're not, they're, they all have different names to them, but it's called by the color. And then you eventually start getting into your universe matrix, which is what you get, um, like towards the end, I guess you say that that's your kind of, you have to, it takes one of every other science, um, plus down at the bottom, I can't hover over it, but one of those special little things, which we were going to get to much, much, much later. Anyway, that's where we're at. So first things first, you can queue up to, I believe, eight things. So the way I like to start is obviously you have to start here to get your power. And then you can go right into blue cubes, which I don't. I usually tend to go into automatic smelting because you want to be at a smelt. Logistic systems, of course, because you need to have belts. Assembly processes, I usually let. This I let, you know, I don't, I don't just queue up a thousand things at once. I like to try to get things that aren't blue cubes to start. This you don't need in the beginning either. I like to try to get thermal power up when I can, but I want to get the main stuff going. You're smelting. Steel you don't need right away. This you don't need right away. And then after these three research, then you can enqueue this. Now, there are also tons of upgrades. This is to you, your mecha, and the gameplay itself. Obviously, things that are grayed out, you can't select. <laughs> so you, the first things you can select is universe exploration, which is what I talked about in the beginning, where on the right-hand side there of your map, it showed you, you know, crude oil, coal, but it had unknown because you need you exploration to unlock that. And that's just, this is level one, I guess you call it. This is your home system, your home, your home planet. This will be your home system. This will, this will keep going out to six light years away. And then this will be all planet systems. And this is much, much later tech. And your mecha core. So your mecha is your little robot, if you want to call it that. And um, you press T to go in and out of this, by the way. And then uh, your mecha is this thing. To open up the mecha panel, you press C. And it basically tells you, you can switch, I think, a, a little bit of the colors, not too much. I think it's just kind of like, I don't know, things here. I don't, I don't really mess with the colors because I don't really care that much. And it says here, lack of fuel, as you can see. So your mecha needs fuel down at the bottom of the screen here, which you can see. It tells you your core energy. When this is zero, you can't do anything. You walk very slow. You can't fly or run. You can't do anything. And this will increase as you have research, of course. If you see there, it says power generation. Core generation is, is 80 kilowatts, and then total is 80 kilowatts because we have nothing else to power it. In early game, in the beginning, you don't have you. You're given hydrogen fuel rods, which I tend to not use in the beginning. Well, I don't know, but you want to start collecting wood. So you right click and you hold down shift, and then you can start collecting your basic resources. And that's the same thing of how you start collecting stone, um, iron, etc. Because until you have miners, you have to do everything manually. So I'm just getting organic fuel, etc. Just a little bit, just to get started here. And then um, in here, which is very good, it doesn't auto sort. But if you click this little thing here, it auto sorts your thing, your inventory. And if you hold control on something and you click it, it automatically will put the whole stack in. Now, as you see, the wood is burning through like crazy. Now, I stopped moving, so it's not burning through power. But as soon as I move, it starts doing it again. And once you start building and use your drones, etc., it really starts taking, you see, uh, taking power. Now, you see how slow I'm walking. This is because this is your base mecha speed, which is basically nothing. Um, yeah. We need to get the first research up and running. So you can start collecting things. If you if you right click on a certain resource, it'll continue to gather it until the vein or the little node is empty or you walk away or you click off of it. But usually I'll just let this run, hit F, open up. If you look at the research to get these coils, we need, um, we need 10 coils to get the next level thing. So you click on that. Down here, you can, you can select anything from one to 10. I like to go to five for some of these things. I hit it twice. And uh, yeah, and as you see this, if you hover over it, it tells you what the component's called. 
let me get away from that so you can hear me away from that and then it tells you what you get so basically this is made in an assembler or a replicator your kind of crafting thing is called a replicator it says it needs one copper and there we go anyway you get uh, it takes one copper you have creator and you off and then it takes one magnet now if you see magnets are made 1.5 seconds for one iron ore to get one magnet and this is your your most of your basic ingots your iron copper is a one-to-one -one. and we'll go into more of that a little bit later on in detail so what did we unlock we unlocked power we have tesla towers which are basically power poles and then you have wind turbines which in the beginning this is what you start with so you just place one somewhere and now the way to oh yeah these are you have achievements um you right click it to close as you start playing new games you will get these achievements which i'm not sure if you can disable them or not but i let them up it doesn't really bother me now i know i'm jumping around here but you see there's a grid the grid changes as you get further away from the poles okay as you get close to the middle of the map your like zones here become bigger and this is basically you have fault lines here and it basically keeps the game so you can build things kind of everywhere whoops everywhere and here's another fault line as you get more and more to me would be to the left towards the equator which would be down here somewhere you can build things a lot better uh, you never want to build things, assembly arrays, or want to over top of fault lines because, as you can see, the grid lines don't exactly line up. This line's up here, but this one is up here, and you'll have jankiness, which you'll see later on as we keep playing. Yeah, so basically, we kind of set out the top part of the map. Again, if you press M and you press N, North Pole, South Pole, and we are here. The equator is going to be right around here. Now, you want to try to build as close to the equator as possible as you go along in the game. Now, as we're just jumping around like crazy here, um, we're just going to start off as basic as you can get. And I kind of show you my basic ways of how I like to start. Now, as you notice, before I place down anything, you can see on the left hand side here for this next research, which is smelting, you need 10 magnetic ring magnetic coils and you need 10 circuit boards, which you could call green chips. Um, but circuit boards are fine and they take uh, one and one and two to give you two and these are the ones we did before one and two to give you two and you're in the beginning game there's a lot of kind of jumping around between okay do I want to replicate everything in your replicator here or do I want to try to get assemblers up right away to try to work on power it's similar to factory or any other sort of like strategy builder in a sense like that is you have a thousand things you want to do and it doesn't really matter which five you start with I like to get research going when I can but I also tend to forget about it sometimes but for this sake as you see we don't have anything we don't have any iron we have 10 iron and we only have a couple copper but we have no we can't make any of these so we have no iron ore and I don't know if we can even make we can make five of these now Again, I'll set this to five. Now that will satisfy this because each one of these gives you two. So this, see, this is counting down. So we have 10 and 10, but you need these still. But as you research things, at the uh, you can see we now have a miner. And if I'm jumping around a lot, I apologize. I'm just trying to cover everything in the uh, time I have allotted here. Down at the bottom here is you have your hot bar in a sense. You can't customize this. This is just where it is. Every key has a hotkey to it. And then the X here is just for a delete, like a dismantle or dismantle mode, um, for instance. So down here, you have your power. Right now, we can build Tesla towers and wind turbines. And the number in the bottom right-hand corner is how many you have of them in your inventory, which is kind of handy. You don't have to open your inventory every time. Here's gathering. We only are given one mining machine. Now. A lot of people probably put you it. Can use the R key to rotate the mining machine for covering uh, more veins. Bye. Um, put it on the iron. I tend to put it on the coal because you need coal in your inventory or in your mecha, which, as you see now, we're just burning wood and it's so inefficient. Now, to place a miner, you can snap it to the grid. 
as you can see it's snapping you press R to rotate 90 degrees now if you hold down shift and press R it'll rotate pretty much any direction you want it to now the key thing with these miners now this isn't exactly for this demonstration but you want to have at least six nodes and you can see which ones you have this one has six because they'll have a white ring around them that'll that'll be turning you want to have six nodes per miner and this is before any upgrades etc because two miners will produce six per second and six per second is what your first basic belts can carry and this is with any type of ore that you're mining so i'm going to place it there and as you see you have little drones and drones are how you always you start with drones and you can research more and more and more and more etc as as you, um, you go on building the in the beginning you're gonna get tons of tutorial things up there I'm not sure if I should have disabled that or not as you can see this one is bringing in um, 128.6 per minute which is less than three per second um, that's because we're only running one turbine and you see here this is kind of your power window you click on anything in the network it tells you what your satisfaction is consumption charge discharge we're not using any of this and then this is basically producing 300 kilowatts but this well it's filled array so again hotkey you can click it and it take the whole stack or you control click and it takes the whole stack now here we're using we're, we can produce 300 kilowatts but we're using 420 because each one of these miners uses 300, or she's using 420. Now, it doesn't tell you here that it does that, but when you hover over it at your bottom, it has gathering target speed, um, and then working consumption, auto consumption. Now, everything that you place in the game, I believe has, other than belts, of course, anything that uses power has an idle consumption, which can really add up. So don't place tons of machines and tons of inserters or they're not called inserters here, they're called uh, something else. I can't remember the name, we're not there yet. Um, because they will have idle consumption. Now it's usually minimal. And as you see here, similar to Factorio, I don't wanna keep referencing that game too much, is once your miner fills up, or an assembler fills up, or anything fills up, it'll just stop. And again, you right click, and it puts in your inventory, you hit F, search it, or excuse me, um, not search it, clean your inventory up. And then if you press C, we can now put coal, right click puts everything you have into that. Wood generation is energy is 1.5 megajoules and the fuel chamber generation is minus 10%. So you're actually having a 10% penalty in your mecha, which we talked about recovering power, 10% loss using wood. You go to coal, you're already up to 2.7 megajoules. So it's more than one, almost twice the amount. And as you see here, the fuel chamber generation is at zero, which means there's no penalty. As you start going up into graphite, hydrogen, etc., your your fuel chamber generation percentage will go up. Your your like bonus percentage based on using better fuel, which is good because it uses less fuel to recover your battery life at the bottom. But anyway, this is the first one. So now we have tons of coal in our mecha. And as we're waiting, we can't do anything. We're walking very slow. We need to do some research, so we need iron. Now, again, I always start off by putting my first miner on coal. You can put your first miner on whatever you want, really. And basically, all I'm doing here is letting this run until I can make 10 of these, which we can't. Um, I want to get at least 20 of these. I'm not exactly sure how many in total it needs because it also needs copper. And if you if you right click with your mouse anywhere on something, your mecha will automatically move to that. And again, bottom left of the screen here, it tells you what you're making in a sense. You're not replicating anything, but your replicator, when you make something, it'll show up down here in this little kind of quadrant of the map. Now, as you can see now, we can make 10 of these. This is the number of the 5X is how much you're making at once. Up at the top, this number 10 is showing how many you can make with your current inventory. So currently we can make 10, which is convenient because we need 10. However, if you remember, this one produces two. So we just need to do one set of five and it will craft the components that it needs. 
Now, early game stuff, all this stuff you can handcraft. Once you start getting up into dealing with sulfuric acid and liquids and certain things, you can't handcraft that stuff for various reasons. And this is just, it'll go through, it tells you, you know, based on how much, you know, one second per this, and this one takes one second. And at the bottom here, again, it shows you kind of what you're doing. And now this is gonna count down because we replicated everything. Now you can't click and move these around which it'd be nice if you could like click one and drag it to the front just to get it done. Uh, but you can't, <laughs> unfortunately you can't do that. But while that's crafting, we need to make ourselves some more power poles, which again, if you're using, it's called manual research, you're using inventory items. So if you're now it says we can have spelters. So if you are using items for research and you start queuing up things that use those items, it will take the items away from it. So you gotta be careful with that. So we gotta get some power, or some towers going. And as you see, we have smelters. We have three smelters. So the next thing I wanna do is make a miner, which we don't have anything to make a miner. So let's gather, I think we have enough copper actually. Let's gather some more iron ore. And again, this is you know kind of very slow going in a sense um, when you kind of start out. I'm also trying to talk and explain a little bit more when we get into episode two, I'm going to be, you know, kind of explain things when I feel it's necessary. But right now, I don't feel anything's necessary. Okay, cool. Now we can make miners. We can make one miner. And now we just got to wait and wait and wait until we can... Now we can make another one. And two is fine to start off with. We can put one on iron and we can put one on copper eventually. Now, as you see in our inventory, we have smelters, arc smelters. Now, in this game, everything is powered by electricity. There's no coal smelting, or there's no inserter, you know, um, burner inserters based like kind of factory. There's none of that. It's everything's based on electricity. So you got to generate electricity to do anything. Actually, while I'm here, I can place down this. Now, again, there's hardly any veins here. So I kind of want to cover all six of them if possible. There you go. Two, four, six. And I actually have one more over here. So... I'm actually going to use that. Might as well use it while I'm here. And you want to cover all six if you can, which you can now. But it's like the problem is we have no power here. We have we can't make any power. We have no belts. So again, early going is early going. So you want to just try to link everything as much as you can. And when you drag things like towers, power towers, it will tell you your your distance. And now I'm out of power tower, Tesla towers. I'm out of them already. I don't think I can, I can make one more and I'm out of iron. <laughs> so it, the game, as I said, it's very kind of slow going in the beginning. It's just, it's just how it is. And I don't really find anything wrong with that. It's just the way it is. Now, again, if you would have started making iron in the beginning, which maybe would have been smarter, but again, I'm trying to do it in a bit of a way that how I do it. And I don't, I don't mind starting a little bit slower because as soon as you first get your first assembly line up and running and you get your first smelters going, you're always going to have resources. And look at that. Now we can make another wind turbine. As you see, they take a lot of resources, like base resources. I'm going to make another one. I want to get at least, I think, three that can handle the power. Now, one good thing with this game is the fact that Machines will run at a deficit in power. As you saw before, this one's not quite it's ready. So I can place this. It doesn't really matter where I put it. It'll show you if it's connected. It doesn't really matter in the beginning. All this will eventually be getting taken down. Now, you see we're in a big time deficit. Our load is 280%. So it's only 35% satisfaction. So if you click on here, we're only 35%. So a third, this should be 180 per minute. We're a little over a third. But as you see, it's still producing. Even at a third rate of speed, it's still producing. Again, right click, or sorry, control left click. Now you have all this iron in your inventory. So when I wanna start making more things, which I'm gonna make more things of these, uh, yeah, let's do it at five. Boom, I can, I can make it without having to worry. Now I used up all my iron, but guess what? You go right back into it. These, these um, miners really, really make it easy now for comp for argument's sake here not argument's sake i'm just going to do that to get this tutorial off of here 
I have two more towers, so you can place them only a certain, you can only place them so close. Now, once this one, the next one is placed, let's see what our consumption is at. We're, we're satisfied, 100%. So if you click on this, look how much faster this is growing. It's basically, I don't know what the, well, it's, it's 180 per minute, which is basically three per second. And boom, look at that. All just like that, I have 150 iron ore, or, or yeah, iron, iron ore. So now that's just gonna let that run. And I will take one little note as I'm wrapping up the first episode here. I didn't get, we didn't get much done, um, but we will. <laughs> we will as things keep going on here. Um, is that, um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, just, just take your time. Like this is not a rush. And oh, the one thing I was gonna point out is you see how slow we're running? Our mech speed is so slow. When we get into the next episode, when we get some more of this research done, we're going to start working on upgrades. I like working on upgrades very soon. Once you get the basic stuff done, which is basically what I have researched queued up here, I like working on research or upgrades. Sorry, let's actually go into that. So we have Mecha Core already. And some of these things like it says you need Mecha. Um, sorry. Um, you can uh, okay some of these things you can in queue even though you uh, they don't require previous tech in a sense um, this one requires this um, so basically and I guess I'm getting at is you want to have your mecha core power up you want to have your energy circuit which is basically how much fuel power you have and then your drone engines is your drone speed drive engine we're not quite not quite there yet this is flying we'll get into that the next one these down here i don't really touch much at all except vertical construction and again you can take a look at all these but point i'm getting at is i like to go fast and your basic stuff and yeah, i like having drones which here you need blue chips for which we're not going to get into yet this i can make now and then this I these I this I can as well. So I'm gonna leave those for now. And trust me, once you can fly in this game, it's so much better than having to walk. Now, granted, walking is fine um, because you have to walk. <laughs> there, there's no way around it. But as soon as these two things, this is going to be your logistics, which I'm actually gonna actually gonna queue that up before we end the episode here because this unlocks assemblers inserters uh which they're actually called sorters inserters belts and storage your logistics systems so while we're doing that press f again we need 10 of these and we need 10 of those so this is already at five so boom boom this only produces one per second you gotta do that twice this one will produce two per second so you only net but we can't make all of them as you see we are out of copper ore so that's an easy fix. All we gotta do is come in here, boom, we can make them, and there we go. So as this research is happening, we're gonna call it an episode. And I, I know I'm jumping around with controls here. You'll get used to it a lot more. I like to always keep my mech topped up. And I even like to just burn through this, the this plant fuel. Now again, you hardly have any sort of, you, you don't have it really isn't any good to use. You're, bar you're barely using it. It's barely enough to keep your mech going. Um, but I don't have a use for it. You can use it later on for organic crystals. But once we get into that, that's a whole other mess. Oh, last thing on the mecha panel. Down here in the, in the, on the right-hand side, it tells you what drones you have. Um, I have three for three. You start out with three, of course. And then as you get on, you can you get more. Boom. Basic logistics is ready. Now, I'm not going to show the tutorial on that, but this is the next level. So I think this is a good place to end the episode. And it's a little bit longer. I want to try to keep episodes around 20 minutes. I think that'll be good because it's going to be real time, 20 minute playing. But we started off good. We unlocked a bunch of research. We got coal going. We got our mecha powered up real good. We started smelting over here. And then in the next episode, we're going to work on power. We're going to work on, or no, sorry, not smelting, on mining. Next episode, we're going to work on power. We're going to work on getting more miners set up for stone to get stone bricks, to get copper, and to get copper uh, ingots, and then to get some iron ingots, to get all that going. And then that's the first start. There might be one other ingredient, but there's the first start to get your little hub going. And one final thing that I want to talk about. You have received is 
is you don't just because you land here we did doesn't mean you have to start here you could literally walk all the way over here if you wanted to you could walk all the way over here and as the map shows there's tons of water so as we keep going we're going to be filling a lot of this in because who needs water right anyway thanks for watching and thank you for joining me in my first episode of dyson sphere program and i look forward to seeing you guys next time